In this video, I want to take a look at the cutting characteristics of a 2 inch focal length lens cutting into a 0.22 inch plexiglass sheet. Using my nozzle, the convergence of my lens is 2, two inches and measures approximately 3 8 inch from the nozzle. So what I would like to do in this test is to create a series of lines on a slanted surface. So this would be the top of the surface of the workpiece, and this would represent approximately the bottom part of the workpiece, the bottom side of the workpiece. Each line that I'm going to create in this project will have a different speed, and I plan on using speeds of 6 millimeters per second, 7 millimeters per second, 8 millimeters per second, 9 millimeters per second, and 10 millimeters per second. Each line should exhibit varying depths. With the understanding that this is the focal point of the laser, on the slanted surface, I should be getting various depths. My thoughts would be that since it's not very focused at this point of the lasing, for instance, which would be about this part of the focus, I'm suspecting even though the, the focus is in the middle of the object, I'm suspecting that it won't be able to get far enough into the piece because it's unfocused at this point. At the focus section at the very top, I'm suspecting that it'll get the farthest into the material with the most intense portion at the at the top of the workpiece. And conversely to the this location here, on this side, I believe it'll have the least depth of cut at this location. Okay, let's open LaserCAD. And what I want to do is draw, it's going to be a very small portion here. I'm going to zoom in to this location. I think 100 millimeter line should be sufficient for getting a good understanding of a cross-sectional depth. So let's see, I'm using the control to keep the line horizontal. And now I can specify my width. 100 millimeters may be a little bit too long. I'm going to go with about 70 millimeters. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. So this will be my 6 millimeter, 7 millimeter, 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to set them up on the same location. I'll use my x-axis as 10 millimeters for each one. Actually, no, that's that's from the center. So let me see what it would be good. I'll go with 35 millimeters centered. Now let's make it 40. And each one should be, let's see, about maybe 10 millimeters away from each other. Let's start this one at five millimeters. I'll do this one at 15. And I'll make it five millimeters apart. Okay, now I'm gonna cut out the this area here. I think I want to, well, let's see. I'm not sure if it'll matter. I'm gonna to wanna to probably cut it out. And because this is on a slant, I may have to use a really slow movement. So I'm gonna cut it out like that. So it leaves a little bit of overlap on the lines. Not that that really will matter because these are probably gonna be very shallow portions. And I'm hoping that the center, if I align it correctly, the midpoint of this should be the most focused. I'm going to move the whole thing over a little bit. So now I want to apply the different layers. So um, actually this one is going to be on the black layer here. I'll put this one on the blue layer. This one on the red layer. And the green layer here. Pink layer and the yellow layer. Can't really see the yellow layer. Let's see. Cyan. Okay, that's better. So you can see that the, the cut layers have been applied here. And the, the outside box, I wanted to make that one the last one. So I'm going to move this one down here. So the cut order will be uh, the box is going to be the last one it's going to create. So let's take a look at the blue layer, which is the, f the one on the bottom. And that one I want to have a speed of six millimeters per second. And I'm gonna use an 80 
max power for each one of these. So we maintain the minimal number of variables to consider. So the red will be seven millimeters. The green will be eight millimeters. Pink will be nine millimeters. And the cyan will be 10 millimeters per second. So the geometry has been uh, created and now I can go to the machine and find some scrap material and I'll probably put it in this section of the machine here. Even though I am showing it at the bottom corner of the machine, that is, that's just showing zero, zero with respect to the machine coordinates. But when I do a key origin, this zero, zero will be actually wherever I want it to be on the machine. So I'm going to move the machine to the coordinate that I want. I'm going to set the origin on the, on the control because I've set the control panel so that the key origin applies and not the machine origin applies for the positioning of the zero zero or the origin. Okay, we've set up a sacrificial piece here, which is uh, just a scrap piece that we had laying around. And we have something behind it so it'll pick this side up and this is going to be flat against the, the back. Since uh, we, we ha I have this already uh, located at its origin zero zero where I want to uh, put it and the, the entire piece is going to be from around here to here so I'm just going to make a mark just to see where the center would need to be. So 35 is half of 70 so I'm going to approximately mark here because I want to move the machine and adjust the nozzle so it's 3 eighths inches away from this midpoint because that's where the, uh, the most intense part of the beam will be on the surface. I may not have this at a drastic enough angle uh, but we'll see after this particular test because we may not see a difference in depth on this angle. I'm hoping we do but uh, we'll see what we get. Okay, let's take a look at the results of the first one. This one really isn't a valid test because the slant was not drastic enough to allow a good range of focal length to be exhibited on the on the piece. On all of the lines, went all the way through. So I can't really even give a good observation. It would be very difficult to determine even on a kerf if there was a, a wider kerf from one end to the other. So let's take a look at the, the next trial. The last test, the angle wasn't, um, didn't have enough angle, so most of them cut all the way through. So I want to show at a much greater angle so I can get a farther, uh, go, try to go outside of the tolerance of the beam. We're also using a uh, plexiglass with a different protection layer. I'm not sure if that's going to make a difference, but we'll see. But uh, actually, we should use the other one because we're introducing another variable with this protection. So we're going to try this one at the greater angle and see what happens. And also the, the previous one, the rectangle cutting it out, I had to set it 100 uh, millimeter per second and it should have been set at 5. So I, I've changed that and the rectangle should get cut out now. We're going to do a test. All right, so we, we saw a little bit of fire coming in the back of it because we didn't have the compressor on high enough or a greater, a great enough PSI to extinguish flame. And also when you're cutting something behind it, 
there's going to be a flame up in a lot of instances if you have nothing behind it. When you have something behind it, then it it doesn't flare up. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Hopefully, it cut all the way through for the rectangle. This is the back of the second test. The first thing that I would observe in the front of the plexiglass is that you can see that the kerf is a little bit thinner in this location here, and then it gets thicker at the ends. And it seems to be a little bit thicker at the far, uh, at the um, the rightmost end than it is on the left end. At the left, this is where the nozzle bolt was closer to the material, and at the right is where the nozzle was farther away from the material. So this part is only getting unfocused beam past the threshold. This is right in the middle of the threshold or somewhere in there. And on this point, the nozzle would be closer. So that means that the, the focused part of the, the beam was inside of the material. And you had a little bit of unfocused on the top and a little bit of unfocused on the bottom. The five millimeter per second was able to cut out the, the rectangle even though it was unfocused. We can see at the end, at the left portion of it, was it was completely um, burned through. So it cut all the way through. So that's a really interesting result. So this would be the six millimeter per second line, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And you can see the 10, it did go all the way through in the beginning, which is kind of interesting where if the beam or the, the hot spot of the laser, the more intense focused portion of it was in the middle of the of the material, it actually went all the way through at 10 millimeters per second, which also tells me that I could probably go faster and still go all the way through with the focused portion probably closer to the the midpoint inside of the material, which actually actually makes a lot of sense. And at this point right here, we can tell that this looking at this is the back of the of the material. This is actually pretty close to the midpoint. Right here is the midpoint. So this is at the midpoint of the of the material of the um, of the line, this would be focused perfectly on the top. So on the middle line, which is the six, seven, eight, the eight millimeter per minute per second, and even the nine is is almost going all the way through the eight millimeter per per second. It goes all the way through at the focused on the top portion. So what this actually tells me is I would most likely try to focus because it's not going all the way through. It is going all the way through on the on the six millimeter per second, but and this is even even though the, the focused portion is a little bit farther away from the top. So six millimeters per second is actually a little bit too slow. And I would actually think that 10 millimeters per second, I might be able to even go faster than this to get through this material. And it looks like it is, I mean, this is a, the, with the nozzle being, the nozzle almost touching. Let's see, this is the 10 millimeter per second here. The nozzle is almost touching this, this, um, this surface. It's a little bit farther away. It's about maybe a couple millimeters farther away from the surface. So I'm thinking that the uh, the hot spot of the beam is actually pretty close to the end here, not actually to the beginning. And I'm trying to see if I can see any width. You might be able to see the actual um, cross section of the beam, but it might be there might be a little bit too much wiggle room in here to be able to see that. You can kind of see it on these actually. These are the these are the um, these are the slower ones, so it's actually going to take out more material. So as it, this this one looks pretty wide here actually, so you can actually see a little bit of the beam. Um, convergence closer to the bottom of this board. Let me see if I can get my pencil in here. Okay, it's somewhat evident that there is there seems to be kind of like a fillet on the top and that there could be an angle and it's getting a little bit thinner or the kerf is getting a little bit smaller on the bottom. I'm not totally sure that this is actually happening but it's interesting how there is a fillet on the top where there is a little bit of burning and it causes um, some melting, I guess, on the top. But the more I think about it, it's probably not as much the convergence of the beam as it is just being hot at the top and melting in the corner. So I don't want to make any uh, assumptions on that in that respect. The more important thing is, is that it was able to cut all the way through with a 10 millimeter per, per second. And maybe I'll do another trial that has 11, 12, 13, and 14. So let's take off the paper backing and the, well, in this case, it's the plastic backing. See if we can see anything interesting in the cross section. And I doubt if we're going to be able to see anything. Actually, it, there is something noticeable here. See that line? 
in the cross section. It didn't cut all the way through over here, but you can see the line and you can actually see how far it went through from the top here. This being the top, you can see there is a, a line there. So it didn't, I mean, it didn't go through very much at all here. You can see that it stopped about right here. Let's take a look at the other side. You can't really see that much on the other side. It's a little bit more evident here because of the, this one is the 10 millimeter here. So the 10 millimeter is, is really, really, um, the 10 millimeter really shows shows a good deal of information on the cross section. The six millimeters per, per second was able to go almost all the way through, so you can't really see anything on the edge here. Maybe a tiny bit. It's really evident here. We're gonna do the same test as we did with the previous one with the white backing. This is with the paper backing, and we're gonna see how it fares. Okay, so now we've increased the PSI for the compressor to 30, P, uh, to 30 PSI, so we won't have any flare-ups. This one is the one with the paper backing. And before I take the paper backing off, I want to take a look at the cross section. So this one, this is the this is the 10 here. 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6. So 6 is on the bottom here. So you have 10 on the top. So if we look at the cross section of this one here, I think it's really difficult to see because of the light, but I do see something going on right here where I wasn't able to go through, and this is definitely true looking at the bottom. You can see there's a little bit of indentation. That's just because it got a little bit probably hot at that location. But you can see that there is a line from like here to here inside. So it wasn't able to go all the way through, but it was able to go to a certain extent. And this is where the nozzle was far away from the surface of the material. So it's only getting unfocused, unfocused energy. So I think that this is telling me that 10 millimeters per second is more than sufficient to cut through this material. And it's also telling me that I might be able to go faster than 10 millimeters per second. It's also telling me that I should be putting my nozzle pretty close to the surface if I'm cutting. If I'm engraving, I wanna put the nozzle away from it where the, well, let me do some tests with that before I do that. But I know from my previous focusing, if I put the nozzle at the convergence at the top, then I'm going to get a much smaller point on the actual surface. And that would be good for creating photos and, and other engraving. But it's not really good for cutting. So cutting, you really do want to go pretty close to the, you want to put the nozzle pretty close to the, to the top here. Or I should say, have the convergence happen more in the middle of the object rather than on the top of the object. So I'm going to, I'm going to measure it so the nozzle, or I'm going to measure it so the convergence or the focal length causes the, um, the spot, the hot spot to be relatively far into the material. I hope this helps in your laser cutting endeavors. I'll be doing some more tests to get a much deeper understanding of cutting and engraving. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead, you can do it, click it. Go ahead, and also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel, where you can find all of the playlists.